Ladies and gents, making a mess again today. Getting Mr. Beautiful Crusty 48 ready to go. I did these valve springs. Uh, Jamie and I have probably done a dozen or more, two dozen videos on valve springs, doing them, showing how to do them, everything else. So I'll try to just show you the basics here and we're gonna do some of that movie magic YouTube stuff and clap and have our crew do it, right? So what you want is one of these here dingle boppers. I, oh my God, I sound like, what's his name? Derek. So back on topic, compression tester. Take the Schrader valve out and thread it in there. And I set my compressor at about 75 PSI and okay. I'll get right back. This is in all the way. Here's an important step. You connect the air. <laughs> and then what I like to do is give the valve stems a beating because these get all crusty and you go to push your spring compressor down and it just pushes the valves because these won't break loose. So I'm gonna hook up air. I don't have that many hands. I'm gonna hook up air. And what's cool is you will hear, you'll usually hear a leak because people complain about these being so pitted. Get pitted. That one's for my millennials. So when you hook up air and you smack the exhaust valve, it's funny, it'll be pissing like shh out of both ends and you pound the exhaust valve and it seats because it has the pressure. A lot of you guys aren't, you know, remembering that there's quite a bit of cylinder pressure in here uh, during a combustion event. So you crack it and it almost completely seals. Basically, you can only hear it going past the rings. So that's why I always laugh when people are like, oh, listen to how bad my valves are leaking. I, I got to drop it off and get a $2,000 head job on a set of $100 or free cylinder heads. Where's the hand? Let's get the hand. When you hook up the air, it's totally normal to see the balancer spin because it'll push the piston all the way down usually. So the motor will rotate, so don't pee your pants. And then, like I said, th this one doesn't really leak that bad. It only sounds like it's the rings, but anyway, you get to hear the tuba. Like that, and that's, that's plenty to knock the crust loose where you another need. tech tip for you guys this is like a 80 dollar amazon guy it works amazing it really does the biggest thing about making them survive is i put a couple washers and i put axle grease cheapest this is like wolf's head or something extremely cheap you just put it on the threads and whatnot and if you use a zippy boy gun it lasts way longer i would say if it's your first time doing this you should probably just crank them in slow by hand so nothing wild happens, kind of like drifting. Just start off a little light instead of banging into the guardrail and going down the mountain, right? So uh, I'm just gonna push these down and pop these springs out like normal. And then you're gonna transfer the hats over to the graciously supplied, these are like new summit springs. Brian Nutter sent these boys over. These are pretty fantastic looking. They look beefier than a pack 1218. Gonna have to, ask him about that but da -da 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 -da. so these will go in with the recycled equipment another good tip here is these keepers when you have the spring down it's tough sometimes to get the keeper against the stem it always wants to fall down or out you can put high temp grease or vaseline or something and they will stick in place and then you can back this out and you'll be hunky dory also air compressor as i was saying I uh, skipped ahead to this point. I just put some grease all over the tip of the valve stem and these guys stuck right on there. I don't have to hold them, don't have to pinch them, don't have to Here's do anything. A perfect representation of the intake valve leaking a ton and the exhaust really not at all. Listen to that. We have sealed in the freshness. Please don't kill me. This was inexpensive and my engine came without one. And I don't really have one in the scrap heap or in my own collection of blown up parts. So this guy's going right back on. These guys are sealing in the freshness as you can tell. And we are not far off. I think I'm gonna do all the accessories and then lift it in and graciously, Tom, I'm always missing a tiny bit because I put the transmission on also usually. 
So I always want to get my engine hoist about in the center, but that also leads me into hitting my hydraulic pump into the bumper on the Fairmont and even this tube front end on the Mustang. So it's a little bit of a, sometimes I pick up the motor, bring it forward and then get the hook, or I just let it angle very heavily, but that's not very, it's counterproductive for when you're trying to put it back in and keep it flat. Understood. So that's where we're at. I'm sticking to it. 